We've got an interesting guest today. His name is Jamie Robertson, and he's the CEO of Sub-Saharan Organization of Odges and Bears. Based here in Cape Town, we're going to show you a bit about it later. Welcome. Thank you very much. I've got the, the usual first question to ask, uh, Jamie. Uh, what are your priorities today? My priorities today, it's a good question, Mark. Uh, we've been here now for 10 years. Uh, the opportunities and the uh, clients and the operation has changed dramatically in those 10 years. The country's in a different position and of course the opportunity of sub-Saharan Africa is there. We start with our clients, so our clients are demanding much more innovation than ever before. They are absolutely clear that they want a global brand, they want highly informed experts and trusted advisors to work with and they want us to be able to get the right people and eliminate as much risk as possible for them. I have difficulty in finding the right people for my business. Um, for your own business? For my own business. So that's top of my mind. How do we find innovation and how do we collaborate better as a business not only locally in, in sub-Saharan Africa but globally because we're over 50 offices around the world and we're a partnership of partnerships, we're not one business. We're one brand but we're not one business. So as the leader of this organisation it's constantly keeping the client in mind but how do we organise ourselves so that we can deliver on those promises but continue to innovate that it helps eliminate risk and creates value and differentiation versus our competition, which is increasing all the time. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now, how do you see, let's say, the opportunities in your business? Yeah. I mean, there, there must be opportunities, are there? The huge opportunities. Continuously, clients are asking us about how we can help them get their leaders to be much more effective, assessing their current management and leadership and board, helping them with their growth plans uh, how do they find the right people for other territories, given the different cultures? How do they improve diversity in the boardroom? Uh, and then there's opportunities at the mid-range and lower levels. You know, how do you actually assess new talent coming into the business and how do you inspire them? How do you look at the Generation Y, which wants a completely different type of work environment? So clients are much more demanding in that sense but it presents much more opportunity from a consulting point of view so leadership consulting is an opportunity growth in africa for our business particularly kenya east africa uh, nigeria obviously are those the countries that are growing fastest actually we've worked all over um, sub-saharan africa ethiopia i'd say is experiencing extreme growth That's interesting yeah all of the you know oil producers yeah. We're often asked by those African countries to go worldwide and mm -hmm. see if we can find Africans that have been educated in the US or the mm -hmm. UK uh, or France, of course, in mm -hmm. Francophone speaking mm -hmm. areas. And how do they actually find you as a consultant company in these remote? Uh, Funnily enough, through the internet. Um, right. You know, the, the internet for us is, in terms of our marketing efforts, we probably spend 50% of our budget on digital. All right. And um, substantial and events. So yeah, a lot of our attention is now spent on making sure that we're marketing to the right people. So what do you see as your role in all this? And you've got your main offices in, in Dover, have you? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So we're 25 people between Cape Town and Johannesburg, mm -hmm. mostly in Johannesburg. My role really is to ensure that I keep my head looking up above the, a bit like the giraffe of the organization. My legs are still running on the ground, but am I able to keep my head above the trees to see what perhaps is coming and then guide the organisation effectively? Can I find the right people to yes. shape our consulting business and what, what kind of development do they need? How can I support them? And leadership for me is actually all about service. It's not what my people can do for me, it's how can I help them succeed. We at Odgers Burton are passionate about self-awareness and understanding who, who you really are. So we want people to have had an experience where they found something out about themselves, even if they're not successfully placed at the end of a process. And it's the same with a client. We want our clients to have understood a little bit more about themselves through our process. 
That is, you do a refreshing look on, on, on the business, so to speak, uh, yeah. which is executive search in essence, right? That's right, yeah. So what do you see as, as the future? Uh, how does the future develop in your field, of course? Well, I think I can't just limit it to my own field. I think that the business world um, is evolving at such speed that there is very little certainty left in the corporate world. And indeed, I don't know how governments are going to cope because things change overnight, particularly with the digital revolution. Companies who were top brands before have fallen. No industry is immune. Social media is becoming the true reporters of the world. The impact for leadership is how do you remain in touch? Mm -hmm. And how do you remain relevant? And how do you keep the energy to keep it all going? Businesses are more complex than they've ever been. They're more global than they've ever been. That means in terms of the people they hire, they have to be more diverse. And how do you manage a team that is generally completely different to yourself mm -hmm. with all our unconscious biases? So leadership requires very different people, I think, going forward to what we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. We still need to generate wealth for shareholders. There's obviously a, a big play to make sure that we deliver stakeholder return. So society has to benefit, not just shareholders nowadays. So the redefinition of capitalism and what works in the world is going to have to be challenged by leadership. We see a massive inequality between leaders' pay and the lowest paid. If you see the happiness index of the world in countries where it's, it's minimised between the two, they're the happiest countries. So we've got work to do in terms of how do we fix these inequalities in the world, but also deal with the complexities of globalisation, diversity and digitalisation. Leaders that don't get that will not survive as leaders. Mm -hmm. And organisations that don't understand that they will need to cope with change and change mm -hmm. quickly mm -hmm. will not survive. And realising when you need to go as a leader uh, is a brilliant thing. Is there one particular message that you would like to give to the audience that you think uh, they should think about? Yes. Well, my message to any aspiring leader or leader is any bit of feedback that anybody gives you is a gift. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Jamie. This was really intriguing and interesting to hear and uh, certainly gives me a perspective and I'm sure the audience as well. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark.